Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Are you excited that we are able to be here with yeah. one another yeah. and to come and worship the Lord this morning? I don't know about you, but I'm excited and I'm here to sing glory to God because he is worthy of it all through everything, through every trial and tribulation. He is so worthy. Y'all come on and sing it with us this morning. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the king of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were. And now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out. We join them as we sing glory to God. Glory. in the Lord's house today. Amen? amen? Hope everybody's had a good week this week. Yeah, amen. Hey, if you're here for your first time, if you're here visiting, and we do have some visitors this morning, folks, we just want you to join in and worship with us and just make yourself at home. Uh, amen. And uh, we're just so thankful that you're here today, okay? Uh, just a reminder, uh, as far as our tithes and our offering, there has been an offering box set up out in the foyer. Uh, so maybe if, uh, I think we may be doing that for the next couple of Sundays. Just have a box. It's a little bit more convenient for people to just drop it in. Uh, so if you did miss that on the way in, there is a box. As you exit, it'll be out there on your left, okay, on the table. Uh, so we're going to be doing it that way. 
there will not be no PM service here at church this afternoon, but there will be one online at 5 o'clock, okay? Uh, I tell you, that online uh, service is a blessing, you know. Amen. And thankful you do that, Pastor. Amen. The pastor council, council vote will be next Sunday, January the 30th. That will happen right after the morning service, okay? Uh, that's been put off a little bit uh, due to sickness and whatnot, but uh, I think if everything goes right, it'll be next Sunday, okay? There will not be no children's church today, neither will there be any next Sunday. So for today and next Sunday, there will be no children's church, amen? Uh, I do have a card from the McGarrity family. Just thanking everyone for their prayers, their kindness, and their sympathy that you have showed this family, okay? And amen, that's what a church family does in time of need. Amen. Uh, and I guess that's all I've got. Are y'all ready to have a good day in the Lord's house today? Amen. Glory to God. All right. Are you ready? I got through off just a little. I was expecting the offering. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. It's my turn. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. I'm just excited. God's good, y'all. He's worthy to be praised. You know what? I was sick, down as a dog, couldn't hardly do nothing, couldn't hardly breathe. But guess what? God brought me on through. And I'm here this morning with the praise on my lungs, with the praise in my lips. And I'm just ready when that day, when all these troubles and trials are gonna be washed away and we're gonna be reunited. Y'all come on and sing it with us this morning. And some of these days I'm going home where no sorrow ever comes. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Hold his blessed days, I shall feel. 
take just about 12 seconds and worship him like you're excited for salvation this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, you are so worthy to be praised. Father, you are worthy to be exalted. Lord, with every breath that we have, if we turn it into praise unto you, it will never even be close to enough. Father, this morning we thank you that in the midst of our troubles and trials, Lord, in the midst of sickness and poor health, in the midst of family discord, in the midst of the battles of the mind and the depression and anxiety that it can bring, Lord, we thank you that you are still our risen Savior. Lord, that you are still in control. Father, this morning we proclaim against all, every lie of the enemy that would come into our mind, that would tell us contrary, that you are still alive and well. You are still reigning on your throne. Lord, with all the legions of angels, And all of creation singing your praise, singing your glory, saying worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb who was slain. Because they still know that you hold all power and authority, that you are still Jehovah Jireh, that you are still our provider. Lord, that you are still Jehovah Shalom. You are still the peace speaker and the peace giver. Lord, you are still worthy to be praised. You are still worthy to be exalted. Lord, it doesn't matter if I don't feel like it. You are still worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning I declare with everything that is within me, Lord, that my life will be a blazing offering, a blazing sacrifice unto you. The one who gave me the privilege and the honor to even have a life and an existence. And more importantly than that, to have the gift of salvation. So in the midst of it all, we proclaim that it is well. 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 Even whenever it seems like all of hell is coming against us, when everything is crashing around us, whenever the world and the government is in chaos, it is well. Somebody's going to get that in a minute. Woo! like a river attended my way what rose like sea billows roll whatever
It is well with my soul. It is well. No matter what comes my way, it is well. No matter if I believe it or not, it is well. Cause it is well, it is well with my soul. Yes, it is well. It is well with my. Somebody needs to praise him this morning and declare that it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. Satan, you won't have the victory because it is well with my soul. I hold firm to the promises that are found in God's word. And I declare that it is well with my soul. I don't care if it's well with anybody else, but as for me and my house, it is well. She la da 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 she kaya da 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 ye. Na da la 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 ye she did da 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 da. Kaya da 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 ye she da 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 ye. The Lord hates the day when the faith shall be silent. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. And the truth
come on. You can do better than that. Somebody give the Lord some praise in this house. Come on, magnify the Lord with me in here. Oh, hallelujah. God's been good to you. Even though we've been through some sickness and we've been through some trouble and we've been through some trials, I'm telling you, God's been good to us. God's still a good God. Hallelujah. Through it all. Woo. Oh, hallelujah. Well, glory. Put up that verse, though my sins. I sin over. I sin not in part, but in whole. Think about that. Yes! Oh, it is nailed, nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord because you don't bear them sins anymore. Can you praise the Lord this morning because your sins been nailed to the cross? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have I got anybody in here who's saved and you're glad you're saved? called me and her Mimi yesterday morning we was in the getting ready to go to town and she called us up and she said Mimi pal got something to tell you yeah baby what do you want to tell us my name's in the book There for a few minutes, I, I just had to say, well, what book are you talking about? And she said, you know, Jesus' book. And I said, what are you trying to tell me, baby? She said, I gave my heart to the Lord this morning, Pa. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but I got something to shout about, glory to God. This morning. I'm going to tell you, we've got a lot to praise the Lord about when we know that our sins are covered under the blood. And I want to tell you, it ought to make us want to go after more folk. It ought, to want to, it ought to make us want to go after more people. Amen. Out here in this world who are lost and undone without Jesus Christ. Glory to God. I know that I haven't had a chance to really preach, Lord of God, on our vision like I would like to, but Lord of God, I'm going to carry on this morning if you'll allow me to. I'm going to tell you, even though we've started out this year the way we've started out and the devil's been after us, let me tell you something. i got to tell somebody this. The devil wouldn't be after this church so hard if there wasn't a blessing right ahead of us. Come on now. All he's trying to do is keep you and I out of the glory of God. Yes. And I'm telling you, I know what he showed, what the Lord showed me the last of last year. Glory to God, he showed me a harvest coming into this house. Yes. Praise God. Amen. I want you to go with me. I'm going to continue on. Matthew chapter 9. 
Matthew chapter 9. Woo, glory to God. Matthew chapter 9. Starting in verse 35 and reading through verse 38. When you have it, say amen. If you're reading off the screen, say amen. All right. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogue, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest. I want to minister this morning on the harvest, the heart of Jesus. The harvest, the heart of of Jesus. If you would stretch your hands this way and let us pray. Father, Lord, as we humbly come before your presence this morning, we give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, I want to thank you today, Lord, that you just reaffirmed to us that it is well with our soul. Lord, that you reaffirmed us that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, that you are everything that we need. You're the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, Lord. You are everything, dear Heavenly Father, to us. Lord, we love you. Lord, with all of our heart. And Father, I pray today, God, that you call labors into the harvest field. But Lord, more than anything, Father, help us, Lord, to be the labor that you want us to be. Lord, before we can go and call anybody else. Lord, we need to be about your business. And Father, I know what you said that you're going to do in this church. And Lord, I pray, God, let us see the harvest. Lord, begin to flow. Let us see souls being saved. Lord, not just in these hallowed halls, Lord, of this church, but Lord, help us to be people. Lord, that along the wayside, Lord, in Walmart, Lord, even on our job, Lord, we'll, lead, we'll kneel down with somebody and lead somebody to the Lord. Lord, right where we are. Lord, I pray let us see the harvest come in and fill your house. Lord, we give you the praise, the glory, the honor for it all in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. The harvest, the heart of Jesus. Glory. I want to share with you today, glory to God, a picture of the heart of Jesus Christ. Glory to God, in Matthew chapter 9, beginning in verse 35, we have a marvelous revelation of what motivated the ministry of Jesus. And I want to tell you what it was. It was people, glory to God. It wasn't a building. It wasn't a nation. It was individuals. It was people. He came to heal and to reach out to sinful people who deserve only the judgment of God. But I want to tell you, that is the heart of the Savior. Lord God, he wanted to reach out and love on those who are undeserving. Does anybody in here remember a time when you were undeserving of the love of Jesus Christ? But how many this morning will raise their head and say, I thank God that that a God who, come on, he come and loved me even when I didn't deserve to be loved. Amen. He found me. Oh, I'm so glad he found me. I'm so glad he raised me up. I'm so glad he put my name in his book. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm glad he come. It didn't matter. Yeah, I was raised the son of a preacher, but that didn't save me. Glory to God. I was raised, glory to God, the grandson of a Baptist deacon, but that didn't save me. I had to find the Lord for myself, and I'm I'm so glad I'm so glad I'm so glad that he came and found this boy at the age of 13 at the end of a Baptist pew glory to God with my face in that pew my mama down behind me laying her hand on me saying God save him and he gloriously saved me now can I say I've lived it all my life no there have been times I've backslid but I'm still telling you the same God that saved is still the same God that'll forgive and will deliver and will restore in the name of Jesus because his heart is people it's people 
Glory to God. Sometimes I think in the, in the Christian world and in the church world today, we've lost sight of people. I think we've come to the place in some of our Christian circles that we care more about buildings and bank accounts. Come on now. Glory to God. Because it seems like every time that I go around some ministers, all they want to talk about is how big their building is and how many, how much they've got in the bank and what their numbers are. I got news for you, folks. Uh, Lord God, all that uh, has its place. Uh, but, folks, I want to tell you, if all, come on, if all we have is ten folk, uh, Lord God, I want them ten folk to be on fire for God. Um, I want them to hate sin. Um, I want them to hate the devil. I want them to love the Lord with all their heart uh, and evangelize and turn Sparta upside down for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless God. Listen to me. It's not about those things. Amen. We need to get back to the heartbeat of God, which is people. You see, he's still doing that today. Amen. And he's inviting us, glory to God, to join him in reaching the world with the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, I just want to bring to you today three things, three points about the heart of Jesus for the harvest. What do we need to do like him if we're going to get in the harvest? Well, first of all, we've got to see what he sees. Can you say that to your neighbor? You've got to see what he sees. What are you saying, preacher? Look at what he said there in verse 36. The word of God says, oh, hallelujah. But when he saw the multitude... Folks, I want to tell you, Jesus saw that multitude. He was moved with compassion when he saw the multitude. In other words, he just didn't see them, but he saw their needs. How many times Lord God, have we seen people, but we really haven't seen people? How many times have we looked on the outward appearance and said, well, you're a nobody or you're a bum or, or you're on the wrong side of the track. Come on now. We've all been guilty of it. We've all judged people by their outward appearance. But I want to tell you, the Word of God says that we were all made in the image of God. It doesn't matter what our color of our skin is. We're all made in the image of God. And we all have a soul. And that soul is worth going after. Praise God. You see, we got to see, as Jesus said, there is, is 6.2 billion people in this world today and multitudes around this world are lost in their sin. And I've got to ask the question, church, do we even care? You see, Jesus compared these people to sheep having no shepherd, uh, weary and scattered. Uh, he saw their condition. Can I tell you, before you and I judge somebody, <laughs> you need to understand the story behind the outside appearance. Let me, under, let me tell you, there's more going on behind the scenes than what you heard and what you know. Glory to God. There's more, as Paul Harvey used to say, more to the story. Jesus saw them. Oh, they, come on now, folks. You know how people are. People put on a good facade. People put on a good face. When they don't want somebody to know what they're going through, oh, they'll put a smile on, amen, as big as their face, but it's as fake as all get out. Amen. We can be smiling on the outside. Uh, we can be sitting in church. Uh, and uh, I've pastored for so long. I've come to know this. Uh, I've had people sit in congregations. Uh, they will shout the house down, uh, but they're broken at home. 
and they don't want to uh, tell what's going on in their life. They won't even tell the pastor, glory to God, because uh, they've come to the place uh, that they just don't trust anybody. And the devil's convinced them uh, that nobody loves them. Uh, Lord God, not even God anymore loves them. Uh, they're still going through. Why would God allow me to go through what I'm going through? If he did, if he still really loved me, he wouldn't allow me to go through this. Listen to me, folks. Uh, Lord God, we all go through stuff. Uh, amen. And the Lord allows us to go through stuff to build life our faith and to build our character and to show us who he really is you see you don't know what that person besides you is going through sometimes you don't even know what your spouse is going through but Jesus he saw them as wearied and scattered you see he saw their condition you see, and those who should have been their shepherds of that day were largely responsible for their confusion and their hopelessness. You see, the religious leaders of their day offered a religion that added burdens instead of lifting them. I want to tell you folks, praise God, I don't care nothing about being popular in this world. I don't want to preach a gospel that can't shake you up and take you up. Won't wake you up. Come on either. I want to tell you. I, I don't want to preach a gospel. Amen. That leaves out the power of the Holy Spirit anymore. You see, we've got churches across this nation that all they want to do is preach a gospel that, that just pats you on the back, tells you you're all right, you just keep on fighting the good fight, you'll be all right, but offers no help. Come on now, I want to be a church that shows people to Jesus. I want to be a church that shows them the Holy Spirit is still available today. His anointing and His power is still real, glory to God. He can invade your situation situation and change it in a moment praise God I don't want to be one of these slick tongue preachers glory to God as Paul alluded to in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that comes with enticing words of men's wisdom but I want us to be a church and I want to be a preacher I want to be a pastor glory to God Amen. That flow that flows in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Oh, now, Pastor, you're setting us up for people to call us weird. Let them call, call us whatever they want to. Because let me tell you what will happen. They'll get, they'll get enough of that fake stuff that ain't doing nothing for them. They'll get enough of that fluff that ain't helping them. And they'll finally figure out that there's a church down the road that still preaches Jesus and still preaches the Holy Spirit and still preaches a full gospel rightly divided. They'll figure out that there's a church in town that understands and knows how to get the job done. Praise God. You see, we ought to be a hospital. We ought to be a helping station. We ought to be a place where people can come in, amen, and find people who can lay hands on them, anoint them with oil, pray the prayer of faith over them, and then walk out different than they come in. We shouldn't be a religion that's casting more burdens, amen, on people and weighting them down more. You see, Jesus knew that these people were without God and they were without hope. Let me ask you a question. How do you see people? Do you see people like that? Do you see people without God? Do you see them without hope? Do you pity them? Do you feel compassion on them? You see, that is our need to feel compassion because of their need. Jesus saw the multitude and was moved with compassion on them. Jesus didn't see them as always being in that situation. You see, I think that's where we differ from him because Sometimes we get to the place that we don't think people can ever recover and be better than what they once were. Oh, but I've got some examples in here of some folk who once were rough. I got some folk in here 
who, who once had some problems. I got some folk in here that once had addictions. And when your 12-step program didn't help, Jesus stepped in and delivered you straight from the... Come on now. I'm telling you. We need to see people. Glory to God. It doesn't matter how messed up or jacked up their life is. We need to see them. Amen. That they can be saved. They can be changed. We need to see them for more than what they look like right now. Yeah, we can see their condition. But I want to tell you, we need to get a little bit more vision and see further down the road. You see, Jesus saw them for what they could be transformed into. He saw the lost being saved. He saw sinners becoming saints. He saw the guilty being set free. He saw the unforgiven being forgiven. He saw those deserving hell getting grace. Do I have anybody here? Said, that was me, praise God. God, I've been saved. I've been set free. I've been forgiven, my Lord. He saw the potential in you and I. Take a breath. Exhale. Four people around this planet have just died. And three out of that four is without Christ. Folks, that's the numbers. That's how imperative it is for us to see. You see, people are dying every day and going to a Christless eternity. And the challenge for the church today is that there are untold millions who still are untold. There are still thousands of language groups that still don't have the true gospel witness. We've got to see what Jesus sees. Number two, we've got to feel what Jesus feels. We've got to feel. What do you mean? The word of God says he was moved with compassion for them. He's seen that they was harassed and helpless by the attacks of Satan. But he was moved by compassion, that word compassion, amen, in the Greek. It means to feel the pain of another person in your own heart. I want to tell you, no wonder the church ain't moved, moving like it should. No wonder the church world ain't reaching out in America like it should. Because we're not feeling the hellfire flames anymore. Amen. I told you my dad was a pastor. He started out as a Baptist pastor. He told me a story of going and talking to a man who all of his life claimed to be an atheist. And let me just go ahead and tell you right now, there are no real atheists. Because you let them get on their deathbed and they'll cry out to God every time. But my dad knew this guy. He was mean in the community where he pastored. His family, the guy's family, come to church where dad pastored. Dad had prayed for him and prayed for him and went and talked to him and he wouldn't listen. And all of a sudden, the man's laying on his deathbed. And he tells his wife, he says, you go get the preacher. So dad gets a couple of his deacons and he goes down to the guy's house. And the guy looks up at my dad and says, pray for me. I want to be saved. My dad looks at him and said, I'll pray. And I hope that you haven't went too far as pushing away and rejecting the Holy One of Israel. Dad began to pray. And he said, I don't feel nothing. Pray. And dad and those deacons begin to pray a little bit harder. And he says, oh, Oh, he began to scream at the top of his lungs. Dad said, what's wrong? He said, pray, I feel the flames of hell around my feet. I'm burning. Pray. And 
they prayed and they wept and they cried. But he had come to that point of no return. And as far as they knew, he went off into hell, feeling the flames around his feet. Dad said, I carried a burden for that guy the whole year. Every year I was there preaching and pastoring that church. I carried a burden for him. I wanted him saved. I talked to him. Folks, I want to tell you, until we see people going off into hell, we will never, never have that pain and compassion for them like we should. I think we're coming to the place, uh, sometimes I believe in the church world, Lord God, that even church members don't believe in hell anymore. Oh, we all want to think that everybody's going to heaven, but let me tell you something. Not everybody's going to heaven. Uh, Jesus even said not everybody who says Lord, Lord is going to glory. But while we have time and while we have breath, glory to God, we need to have compassion on people, glory to God. We need to see their sickness. We need to see the sickness of their heart. We need to be burdened and broken over the loss of our city and our nation, glory to God. We need to have that burden and pain in us again for the lost. Even Jesus in Luke chapter 19 and verse 41 Jesus, when he looked at Jerusalem, was moved by their spiritual condition. And now, as he drew near, the word of God said, he saw the city and he wept over it. Let me ask you something, saints. As you look over the city of Sparta and the surrounding areas where you live, is your heart moved by the conditions of those lost? Not just lost in sin, but lost in traditional religion that's not doing anything for them. Lost in spiritual darkness. We need to be broken hearted. We need to weep over our lost neighbors, our friends, our family. I've got a son that desperately needs to come back to God. I got to thinking. When my grandbaby called me up and said, my name's in the book. I got to thinking, Lord, me, Lori, Kevin, Lakin, Reese. And if Reagan, before she becomes to the age of accountability, if you were to come back now, we'd go to glory. Where? Where would my son be? And I wonder how many of us in here today have loved ones like that. If you started counting out of your family, how many would go to glory? Or how many would split hell wide open? Would it move your heart to compassion? Would you feel what Jesus felt for these folk? For your loved one? I'm going to tell you, we don't have all kinds of time, folks. We don't have all kinds of time. We're not even promised tomorrow. We need to be telling the story and sharing our testimony with people. David Maines, who was a pastor of the Circle Union Church in the inner city of Chicago. One day in the course of his ministry, he began to pray and 
he began to get a great need upon his heart and a great burden. He said, Lord, let me see the world as you see it and break my heart with the things that break yours. And that's exactly what God did. He really meant what he prayed. And the next day he found himself weeping uncontrollably so much that he had to pray, God, help me to stop crying. I can't cry anymore. I feel the pain. I see the suffering. Folks, we've got to feel what Jesus felt. If we're going to see the harvest as he's seen the harvest, we've, only, we've got to see what he sees. And we've got to feel what he feels. And last of all, glory to God, come on, brother. Play. i got to land this thing. I gotta stop. Thirdly, if we're gonna see as he sees, feel as he feels, thirdly, we gotta do as he did. We gotta do what Jesus did. What is that? Look at what he said. That compassion, the word moved, it moved him to compassion. He was moved, glory to God. How many, when's the last time we got moved to tell anybody about Jesus Christ? When's the last time we got moved to tell anybody our testimony? When's the last time, glory to God, we got moved? To reach out to the harvest. You see, Jesus says that we need to do two things. First of all, we need to pray for laborers. Oh, now that's pretty easy, Pastor. I can pray for laborers. That's not a problem. Glory to God. Listen to what Jesus said. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is plentiful. How many of you know that there's a plentiful harvest out there? There's not a question I told you the first Sunday of January, Lord God, that Jesus even said in John chapter 4 that the harvest was ripe. It's ready. It's plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into the harvest. Why do we need to pray? Because the work is greater than the workforce. Oh, I can do that, Pastor. I can pray. Before you pray, he asked those who were already laborers to go. Before they prayed. Listen to me. Don't you sit here and pray for somebody else going to do what God's called you to do. You got to go. Glory to God. In the days of Christ's ministry on the earth, the laborers were few. And I want to tell you, they still are today. Glory to God. We got too many, as the song says, that wants to come into God's house, sit around his table, get filled and get fed and do nothing. But God doesn't bring you into services like this. God doesn't bring you into a Holy Ghost filled services like we've been having for you to get fat and sassy on the Holy Spirit and do nothing. But He intends to fill you so you can go out and be a warrior in this world today. Tear down strongholds of Satan. You see, you've got to become a laborer. How can we ask God to send for someone else without first saying, Lord, here I am. Send me. You can't be a pastor and not know this statistic. Like this. You got a hundred percent of the church. Twenty percent of the church does a hundred percent of the work. The other eighty percent will lean one 
one way or another. There will be a faction inside of that 80% that will either get them to helping the 20% or getting the entire 80% to do absolutely nothing. Folks, that's where we're at in the American church. But can you imagine what would happen if 100% of the body begin to do 100% of the work? Can you imagine what would happen to Sparta? It'd be like Acts 17 and verse 6 where the Word of God said and them that have turned the world upside down have come here also. I'm telling you, Sparta couldn't handle it. My Lord, if we got about the Father's business and we begin to see as Jesus sees and feel what Jesus feels and did what Jesus did, praise God. Sparta couldn't handle it because I believe we'd have a revival breakout I believe the Holy Spirit would do like it did. And this is this is fact. You can read it. There's a town in Georgia. Church got to praying for revival. Church of God got to praying for revival. They would go in and they would get in the altars and they begin to pray. And the pastor began to preach and he began to preach on revival. Glory to God. Oh, and it, there's documented uh, statements from people. They said in that town, a small town, that the Holy Spirit began to move outside the church. They'd be having church and people across the road, people down the road, people down this way would be in their houses and they all of a sudden, they start feeling the Holy Ghost. They start getting convicted. One woman said, I got to feeling the Holy Ghost in my living room and went back to my, went back to my kitchen. He, I didn't feel him there, so I stayed in my kitchen. Lord God, but all of a sudden, it wasn't very long, I started feeling the Holy Ghost in my kitchen. It's like he spread all over my house. And before long, revival hit that entire county because of one church one body wanted to see their neighbors saved wanted to see their community changed don't tell me one church can't make a difference I want to tell you I, I'm not worried about what the church down the road is doing God has placed us here praise God we need to be concerned with what we're doing right here are we doing about going about the father's business huh? are we concerned about the harvest huh? are we concerned about seeing revival I'm talking about real Holy Ghost filled revival in Sparta praise God are we concerned about our neighbors dying and going to hell are we concerned started these vases with the roses in them back last year recommendation of Bishop Doherty and so far this is what we've got every rose a soul but you know what I'm not satisfied for two vases on each side of the sanctuary I want to see vases all across the stage and I don't only want to see the same ones putting the rose in. I want to see everybody putting the rose in. Because they shared their testimony with somebody and led them to the Lord. Glory to God. Folks, the harvest is coming in. The question is, so are we going to be ready when it comes? Because the Lord, this, this is the vision He gave me. Being prepared and positioned. You gotta be prepared and you gotta be in the right place when the harvest comes. That's what God's getting us ready to do here in East Sparta. Don't be discouraged. Don't be down and out. Yeah, maybe there ain't somebody sitting next to you that you should sit next to you. Glory to God. And I'm telling you, let me let me just put it to you like this. 
God's got that seat reserved for somebody new. God's got that seat reserved for somebody. Glory to God, that you're going to lead to the Lord. It's time that we get about the Father's business. We get involved in the heart of Jesus Christ. And that is the harvest. Hallelujah. Stand with me. I've preached three funerals in the last three weeks. All of good Christian folk. And I wasn't, I was overjoyed for them that were laying there. Actually, I was a little envious. that I preached she was a former minister of music for me in my second church this lady had been in the church for well over 50 years probably 60 years even donated property in Michigan to the Battle Creek Church of God there she had nine children nine I think a few of them already gone on died but out of those nine, now this woman had her children in church she was a Sunday school teacher she was a minister of music sit on the pew all nine of them but only one of them is in church I got up in that pulpit Brother Mike you preached funerals before you know it's just a solemn place but as I got up in that pulpit I felt the spirit of Sister Hazel come to me and say you preach the souls of my kids depend on it I heard her just as clear as I'm talking to you you preach way I know you preach because I don't want to see the rest of my kids go to hell and I looked at them they was all sitting there most of them are partiers and boozers and that's their life and I said this is probably going to be the only time I'm ever going to get to preach to you I say this with every bit of compassion that is within me. If you ever want to see your mama again, you better make it right. Because I know her life. She was a child of God. She lived it. She loved it. I said, I'm going to tell you, being a good moral person ain't going to get you there. I don't care what Hollywood says. I don't care what the tabloid says. Being a good moral person ain't going to get you to glory. If you don't have the blood of Jesus applied to your heart, if your name ain't written in the book, you ain't going to heaven. You'll lift up your eyes in hell like the rich man did in Luke chapter 16. I said, this is the only time I'm ever going to get to preach to you. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm not going to stand before God with your blood on my hands. Because I failed to tell you. And every one of them come by me at the end of the service. They shook my hand and said, oh, that was a good message. And my prayer, and I looked at them and I said, well, my prayer is that you would hate it. I said, I love you. And I say what I say because I love you. Because, listen, I know. 
I know. Have I seen it? No. But I know, according to Scripture, there is a hell to shun. Because Isaiah says that every day the borders of hell enlarge it. Why does it enlarge itself? Because more and more people are going there. Oh, God would never send me to hell. No, God would never send you to hell, but you'll send yourself there because you reject Him. And folks, that's what this world is doing. And that's what we need to be telling them. Glory to God, we need to be telling them the story. You need to be telling them your testimony of how God saved you. We don't have much time left. We don't have much time. I believe the rapture of the church is just around the corner. I believe we're about to go home. And glory to God, with the three that I've preached, I got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Standing there Friday preaching Brother Frank's funeral. I told friends and family that was at the same thing. I said, I don't know who's lost and who's saved here. I spent what greater prize could happen what greater thing could happen than on the day that we put Brother Frank in the ground you give your life to Jesus Christ folks I want to tell you we've got a harvest to get a hold of we've got to see as Jesus, Jesus sees we got to feel as Jesus feels and we got to do what Jesus did bow your heads with me Father God as I come before you today Lord I I feel Lord that you are wanting to take East Sparta and turn it into the hospital its community needs not just for the sick and the hurting Lord but those who are lost Father let this be a beacon in the night let it be the lighthouse let it be the lighthouse that shines in the darkness Lord help us witness help us Lord it's going to be more of a mouthpiece than we've ever have been before God give us that compassion that we feel the pain and the anguish of those around us and Lord it pushes us to our knees and we cry out, Lord, for their soul. Lord, if you've got a lost loved one, would you just lift your hand? Just lift it up. Come on, lift, get it up. Get it up, leave it up, leave it up. Lord, I lift my hand for that lost loved one of mine. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you would touch them. Lord, I pray that you not only send me not only sin them, not only, Lord, but sin, sin somebody to them. Lord, let me go to my loved one. Lord, let someone else, let them receive a phone call from somebody else. Let them, what, let them turn on the TV and, Lord, hear a word from you. Lord, let them turn on the radio and a song come on. And Lord, a word just speak to their heart. And they have to pull over to the side of the road and be saved. Lord, I, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. I feel it. I already feel the harvest of these souls and these hands that are raised. I already feel the harvest coming in, Lord. I feel it. I feel it. 
coming into the kingdom. And Lord, I pray for each one of us that you make us witnesses more than we ever have. And I pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say amen. Amen. Remember, we're not having service physically here, but I am going to be preaching a message online tonight. And I've got a word for you. You need to tune in at 5 o'clock. Now, be praying for us because we've been, we've been getting so much interest in the online. The Holy Spirit spoke to me this last week. We're going to start something. We're going to start something, not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday. I'm going to be doing an online, and the Lord already gave me the, word, the name of it. It's going to be Tuesday Fire. So we're going to be doing an online. It's, it's, I'm not going to be teaching. I'm going to be preaching. Online, Tuesdays. T- going to start February the 1st, Tuesday, 6 o'clock. Praise the Lord. Tuesday Fire. It might as well be revival service. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Get them involved. Get them to log in. Lord God, if they live with you, sit them down. Make them watch. I'm going to tell you it's going to be good. I'm going to record it here as church. And then Brother brother Caleb has already got my intro already made. Going to have my out already made. He's going to premiere at 6 o'clock on Tuesday nights. It's going to be great. So remember, remember these things. Now, I'm hoping and praying, you pray with me, that come February, we go back to normal. Well, let me rephrase that. We go back to being above and beyond. February, first first Wednesday night of February, February 2nd, we're going to start back our Wednesday night services. First Sunday, of Wednesday, uh, first Sunday of February, Sunday morning, Sunday night. Right back, okay? Praise the Lord. We kind of give everybody an opportunity here in the month of January to kind of heal and get whole and, and do what needs to be done. So, and we understand if, if you're still sick, praise the Lord. Still watch us online. Lord of God, come back when you're able. And I'm going to tell you, we're, God's got some great things in store for East Florida Church of God. Do you believe that with me? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So remember tonight, 5 o'clock, it's going to be on the church Facebook page. So tune in. Lord of God, I'm going to be preaching on living with the right attitude hello oh, Lord have mercy. yeah Siri you need to you need to glory to God <laughs> amen hallelujah raise your hands for the blessing of the Lord Father I bless I bless your people you bless your people Father bless us coming in bless us going out Lord let your favor be upon us Lord, even in the midst of the turmoil that's going on around us, Lord, let your favor be on us. And your hand, Lord, guide us through our life. Father, I pray for your peace and your joy to be a part of our DNA. Lord, bless us coming in, bless us going out. Make us the head, not the tail, above and not beneath. Bless us everywhere we go, Lord. And most of all, Lord, let us be a blessing to somebody else. And share you with the world around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.